co-founder of Rital. And this journey from Rital, when we get the slides on the screen, started four years ago together with Krona and uh, we had the pleasure to have somebody on our side to support us with the idea of how to change the last mile, how it exists nowadays and how it would be like in the future. Now it moved quite quickly after I pressed the button. So we, we have the question of the on-demand world of tomorrow. Everybody is going online, that's what we know. The numbers are extremely increasing. People want to have everything anytime, wherever they are, wherever they want it to get delivered. And the delivery solution at the end of the day is a very complex thing, even it looks very simple, but all the data and all the information about the end customers and the goods are coming together on the last mile, and that's where normally the cutoff is between the vehicle, data and drivers and all these we are putting together and we developed a solution which looks very simple in a vehicle, but the question is how did we develop it, how did we do our research and where did we come from. So if you look at the slide, we see that the structure, the infrastructure we know nowadays is more than 30 years old. We have the trucks, we have the congestion in the cities, we have the full load of buses, sorting process is taking place in the road and we have walkers going around with the buses taking a lot of time wasting a lot of massive waste of resources and of course increasing the, the cost excuse me and therefore the question is how can we make that better in the future you see on the screen as well that there are already some options on the pavement there are roads painted for bikes there are options to make cities better for the people to shut them down for cars there are closed areas and these are the learnings we had before we went into our question of what is the ideal bike for the future of the industry of deliveries and that's not only the one thing that we want to substitute you have also to go with the scale-up then the scale-up is another problem that we have the scale-up from 2020 to 2025 will be like a double and these billions of passes who want to be delivered to the end customers per year it's not only the thing from the CEP industry, it's also the question of what else is coming in addition to the parcels we have nowadays. Nowadays we have mainly the Amazon parcels, the whatever you, you call them, but the retails, the brands, the production companies, the corner shops, all these companies are willing to deliver because the end customer want to have the stuff delivered at their doorstep and as close as possible. And this great number is only been touched with 10 to 50 percent nowadays to the ad hoc deliveries of the food and beverage, pharmaceuticals, or the bottle of water. These numbers have not even started. 10 to 50 percent of the turnover has been touched so far. The solution will not be that we put more vans in the traffic, that we put more congestion on the road because the roads are getting closer. We cut off roads, we implement bike lanes instead of roads. So therefore we need a different kind of approach and the approach will be we should not get stuck. We should have more space for the vehicles and to get a performance in how to make it better. And this is the one we created after a lot of research with the market and it looks very simple but it's not. What is special on these vehicles? These vehicles are made as a game changer for the urban delivery. We had a lot of long journey about the question how to make the vehicle in a way that the loading situation will be optimized, very fast loading process. To look at the driver behavior and the drivers are very rude with their products so we have to make an adjustment of the vehicle to the behavior of the people, to make it very stable and robust, to make it very easy to maneuver, maybe to jump with them, and that's not just a joke on the slide. If you make the research and go to German cities where we saw it, if there's a shortcut for a driver and the shortcut goes over steps at the end of the pedestrian area, for example, the driver is up and ready to take the steps. So, I mean, we didn't develop the bike for steps, but we developed a way 
that the bike will not be destroyed immediately after taking the stairs. So the question, how it looks like, that is very efficient, 
is also very economic and the ecological aspect is extremely sustainable vehicle and for the last but also very important we talked about the drivers and the behavior of drivers and how the drivers and the truck industries are treated we developed the bike because it was not really a huge effort to do it but we did it as an extremely ergonomic vehicle so that we are not in the situation of having a lot of sick delivery people what we can see in the market from the deliveries companies you know all over the world with the big backpack these people can only do it for three months after that they need a break or they quit the job because of uh, healthy issues and therefore we need a situation where this kind of job can be done from anybody but on a long term perspective and also if you look at older people because it's a bicycle with the power electric support you can do that with 70 years 80 years 40 years 16 years you name it but there's no problem to get anybody on the bike with an extremely ergonomic footprint to make it very safe for the people to use it and it's not only that it's safe it's also that this vehicle is extremely modular as i mentioned before it comes like a pickup we have uh, if you want a flatbed in the back but normally it comes with the forklifter system and the forklifter gives you the option to put a box on it the loading time is less than a minute so you have the loading process in less than 60 seconds on and off for nearly two cubic meters and that is very efficient because the pre-sorting process as we just heard about the trailer loading system in one shot we have the complete box already pre-defined and can load it in one shot this together with the euro pallet gives it not only the possibility to use it in the delivery situation but also in the industrial area where you have the intercompany deliveries and can also use it as a forklifter with a big advantage no driver license if you think about forklifters in your area where you come from in the logistic world the biggest problem people need a driver license for that and it's a very dangerous thing this is quite safe because the driver goes to the front like a bicycle driver and has the full capacity of the loading of the box and this can be easily 250 kilos and the volume of this box of this euro pallet of course is the size of the euro pallet and in the box which you see in the middle the inner side of the box is the same you can put a euro pallet into the box and have the full variation of the box and you put euro boxes in to make it a really really easy standard loading and unloading process on this picture you see how we did the engineering the engineering took us more than expected the bike took longer than the hydrogen truck but our team was a little bit smaller so the suspension as you can see here is a very important thing why? Because the shock absorption of the vehicle is extremely healthy for the driver, for the vehicle and for the goods to transport. And the downside, I mentioned earlier, people go downstairs with a bike, which could be the situation, but uh, we are the only one in the market to do so. So therefore, it's a competitive advantage to cut off short time cut. There are a lot of more positive aspects on this vehicle. The main thing is that it's extremely easy to maneuver you can turn on the spot so your turning radius is a little bit bigger than the vehicle is in size and therefore it makes it extremely easy to get close to the door that was a 90 percent better in closing close to the door delivery than all the other vans you can see in the market and on the other hand there's the option to go backwards this is not only important for loading the euro pallet or the boxes but it's also very important to go back when you are close to the door in a very easy way to be back on the road and to save time and to go next delivery station to do the deliveries. The reducing of cost is a very important thing. Whatever we do here is less cost than any comparison with van and it's of course extremely sustainable as I mentioned earlier. The insurance issue is something which is always raised. There's no insurance in Germany and in Europe for these kind of vehicles 
Today is the way it is, maybe different in the future, but at the moment it's extremely easy to use. No driving license, no insurance, and two cubic meters of volume in an extremely flexible situation, and you can do the 24 7. But this game of a vehicle only works when you have the family around to support it. It's like in real life, if you only have a vehicle and the touch points, the interfaces are not very clear, it's a substitution of a band, but it's not really fits in the infrastructure. So we developed the whole infrastructure together with the half size swap body of the of the of the Krone family. We put it in half size on the back of the Ibeco in this example. Quite sad that the uh, colleague from Ibeco is not here anymore to see that. But this kind of mobility of goods from outside the city to get into the city with a kind of box transportation is quite unique and doesn't exist in the market. So we are able to have nine boxes in one small container which goes automatically electric up and down on the floor and has access to the telematic family we are using through the driver with this app owns the, the, the micro hub and is ready to access to the boxes, puts it on the bike and from here it goes and starts deliveries. This kind of concept has been proven in a lot of cities and the key is that these functionalities are connected in the IT, in the digital world. So now we spoke a lot about the way of getting the infrastructure and the goods to the end customers and all of this is underlined with the digital information of which parcels goes where, under which circumstances and what do we get out of it and what do we learn of it. So we combine the physical delivery with the digital platform of the delivery information to make the delivery experience a learning curve in order to predict the future deliveries and to drive at the end of the day future behavior. Therefore you need the operating system where you have the asset management, where you have the routing, where you have the telematics, you have the geofencing and a lot more functionalities you can think of in order to make the vehicle an intelligent, smart vehicle where you know where it is, how it goes and how the performance works. This together is the fundament of an ecosystem. And if you see the summary of the city which I just mentioned, you have the vehicle inside, you have micro hubs, you have all kinds of different cargos all over the day. Remember the 24-7 approach. And then you have one kind of vehicles they are all over in the city like ants and you can load and unload them wherever they pass by and it's a mixture of the business from the warehouse or the micro hub in the city to the end customer and on its way the vehicles are able to collect and to deliver other kind of parcels in a completely mixed way. So the fundamental of this innovation is that we have the combination of the aggregation on the one side of parcels. So any kind of parcel you put on the bike and on the other hand any kind of customers you can serve with the same bicycle 24 7. But this sounds easy but it's of course very complex. So if you look at this complex situation for the disruption we need the ecosystem to change the logistics which I just touched on a couple of points. So it's the packaging concepts you have to keep in mind, it's the new warehouse design of pre sorting of boxes and to keep them in a very efficient level. It's the cost control where the costs go down because of the use all over the day. And it's the delivery process which will be changed in the future because I did not mention the instant delivery or the flexible delivery time or the ad hoc delivery like the the Q commerce, what we have from the media in the last 18, 19 months, extremely intense in our mind. So these things you cannot use with the kind of vehicle you saw in the beginning, the typical trucks with the sorting process in the road. This is not the solution for the future because they are not flexible. You cannot adjust it for what you need. So you need more developing in the process as well, what we provide with our kind of vehicle. The ESG requirements are also extremely important these days. 
And at the end of the slide, the vehicle usage is, of course, with all the analytics, a big question how the future delivery will look like. And this is where we get the data and we make our prediction. For the user, for the end customer, these kind of infrastructure in the ecosystem just increase the performance at a lower cost. It's normally a very unreal scenario because people don't believe in that, but with our product, it's real. So the fully integrated last mile ecosystem has been testing in the last couple of years. We did it with premium brands. We have more than 5,000 vehicles together with the smaller brother of the Uber with the German Post. And all this experience and all this research we did in the last four years came to one spot in the development of the new Uber 3, which we have here in this presentation. These proven concepts are green and fully sustainable, highly efficient and cost reducing. The data from nature game, as we call it, does not only help the performance of the logistic companies, but also help the planet to reduce the number of deliveries and to reduce the number of vehicles to go to one customer. So in our perfect world in the future, we have roads to be delivered with only one vehicle because you do the aggregation of passes beforehand and you don't have like five, six or seven companies a day serving your personal household. So therefore we need technologies and innovations in vehicles which we have with the Google screen. All this data pays into this new technology to make it happen and we think that the future of this is not only because the big brands in the globe believe in us, we are only four years in the market and we are proud to present the new Uber here and we thank a lot to the partners we developed this together with because all the knowledge of the last mile we collected in the last four years and we put all the experience into the new product. We did it in Europe in more than 70 cities now, we have these products in place and we're up and running. We have pilots globally, we work in Bogota and Colombia very successfully. It's a very intense city, but it's the, it's the uh, main capital city of bicycles in Latin America. So the use case was quite easy to, to put there. And the number of awards we won over the last years shows that this kind of thing is a thing people look at and they like it in a way they want to change it with us to the future. So we are happy to give you the insights of the sustainability as a service and please come to the IAA and visit our booth and Hall 13 is part of the Krona group so you will not miss it and everybody has to pass by and I'm really looking forward to see you smile like our fantastic writer here in the picture. Thank you very much.